In this first aid series video, I'm going to talk about toothaches and gum pain and how to relieve those using your weighted tuning forks. So toothaches, uh, one of the things we have to consider with a toothache is that um, the inside of the pulp of each of our teeth, there's actually like a mini interstitial space. Just like you would have in your skin here, you have um, a blood flow going to it. So inside of our tooth, we have, um, we have the same sort of vessels that brings plasma and things into our spaces in our skin. It's happening inside of our tooth as well. Each individual tooth has its own blood flow. It has its own nervous system. It has its own ability to remove excess fluid from within our tooth. And then, of course, we have problems in the gum itself. So we have our tooth with its own blood flow and own filling up of fluids inside the pulp. And then if that has a problem inside the tooth, there's no way for that stuff to expand like it would here. So there is a, a confining of things happening within the tooth that would fill up with fluid um, that can't get out of the tooth. The only way out the fluid build up from your tooth inside the tooth is through the bottom of the tooth, through the root system. And sometimes underneath the root system is inside of the um, interstitial spaces in your jaw that there is a quarantining or um, cordon off of the ability for that fluid to get away as well. We want good fluid drainage because when we have tooth pain or gum pain, then it pain means something is pressing against. If my fingers were, were nerve endings, something is pressing against that, um, that receptor that's causing pain. And if you think about it, why would we normally not be in pain? It's because our nerve sensors are not being compressed. When you start to get fluid buildup, unless somebody's punched you in the mouth or there's some sort of um, um, an acute injury to your nerves where the nerve endings were severed or damaged or something like that, if you have tooth pain, what has damaged your nerve endings? It's really compression, compression against those nerve endings with fluid. So you get inflammation and swelling. The fluid builds up. The fluid gets... Um, pressurized inside of these spaces and it's fascia that normally does this even within our gums. Um, we usually think of edema happening within our skin, within our periphery and our legs and things like that where we start to have swelling. Well guess what? Edema and swelling are pretty much the same thing. One's just a little bit more localized and they can localize even as much as being just underneath your tooth or inside of your tooth. Too much fluid pressure and it's fluid that comes out of your arteries, out of the capillaries, and it happens inside your tooth and it happens in the gums itself that we have that buildup of pressure. And what we're going to do is use the tuning fork to relieve it. So this particular first aid technique with the weighted tuning fork is going to involve just what we call a point and shoot. That means that we're just going to be taking this tuning fork and putting it right down on um, where it hurts. And we're not going to ever put it right on the tooth itself. That wouldn't make sense because you're not going to be able to really get the vibration and, and compress anything going on in the inside of the pulp of your tooth. We want all of that compression to be underneath it on the gum itself. And most likely if there's pain associated um, with a toothache or gum pain or maybe it's you have dentures and um, something's been rubbing against the gum, you're probably going to find some sort of bump. A bump or a lump or something like that, when you press down on it, it's going to hurt. That's where you put the tuning fork. The reason that bump is there is there's fluid building up in a pocket and it can't get out of that pocket. So what we're going to do here is take this weighted tuning fork. Uh, let me talk about the tuning fork itself. This is a 128 hertz tuning fork. You can use any tuning fork of any frequency, but here's what I recommend. The reason why I like this tuning fork is the length of it. Um, from a purely engineering mechanical standpoint, what makes this tuning fork so well suited for this is there's a weight down in this end, or weights. As I strike the tuning fork, these tines are moving 128 cycles per second, back and forth uh, 128 times each second. And the weight distribution, as this being a metal bar like this, just like any sort of uh, metal in, let's say, you're engineering something, 
um, like a building or a bridge or something like that, or even a car, the flexing of this metal happens a lot more on this end because of the undistributed weight down on this end. There's more weight down here than here, and it's kind of like a little seesaw effect where as this end is moving around quite a bit, this end moves around and flexes in response to what's happening down on that end. We usually think of weighted tuning forks as using it against the skin and being held against the skin, and this is actually a medical device. It's usually used for diagnostic purposes though, but it's designed to be able to press this tuning fork down against the skin and compress the tissue of the skin for various reasons for diagnostics. What we're doing is we're pressing against the skin to relieve the fluid pressure building up inside of the tissue. In this case, of course, I'm not putting it on the arm. How do you put it on the arm to take care of your tooth, toothache? Um, we're gonna put it right on the area that you press down and you feel, okay, I, oh, oh, that's definitely where it's at. Okay, so you've identified it. Right, I gotta talk to you about gripping first. So when we're gonna grip it, we're gonna grip right here on the meaty area of the tuning fork. Most people tend to grab it right down here on the stem. There's not a lot of ability here on grabbing it on the stem to be able to press against or to control the tuning fork. Very little control here. We can actually grab and grasp it right up here on the best area for clamping down on this with our hand. So thumb on one end, on one side, and then my index finger is just gonna clamp right down on it. And of course, I can move that finger around a little bit. So I'm grasping right here on the yoke. That gives us plenty of um, coordination and movement and plenty of grasping strength because we're gonna to have to put a little bit of pressure down. It doesn't dampen the vibration on the tuning fork at all. In fact, if you grab it and strike it yourself, you can see that you could probably walk your fingers up these tines about to about right here before you'll dampen out the vibration coming from the tines, which are these pieces of metal here. So grasp it. And then you can use whatever striking techniques that you normally use. If you use a, a, um, a rubber activator or a hockey puck or something like that, you can strike it in that manner. What we do here at NEC Academy is we'll strike using the hand. If you see, this is gonna be my strike point, nice and meaty part of the hand, and I'm bouncing it right off the hand. Notice my hand is nice and flat. I've got a good strike. I'm just gonna bounce it right off that part of the hand. And then I'm gonna put it right on the spot that's hurting. And I'm gonna press in just enough to where I, my tuning fork stops moving. So if I move it anymore, I'm moving my skull and it's just a little bit too much. Any more pressure than that, you're just putting more pain on. By the way, this is gonna hurt you when you press down because there's already something pressing against the nerve endings because you're already in pain. So is this going to be a painful resolution instead of ignoring it? What we're doing is pressing against that part. Remember, I'm not up on the tooth itself. I'm never going to press this against the tooth. So I'm pressing the tuning fork down. I'm waiting for the uh, vibration to run out. Then I'm going to strike again. I'll put it right on that same spot. Usually with um, gum pain or toothache pain, they're very confined, very small areas, and you'll probably find maybe a half an inch to an inch wide or diameter on an area here that will hurt somewhere where you have maybe an infection or something like that. And it could also be underneath um, your jaw as well. Just depends on where the swelling is occurring in that inflammatory process and whatever happens to be wrong or happens to have a problem. So I would recommend only using a, um, an unweighted to, or an, a weighted tuning fork with no attachment on the end of this. Because as I told you that we have an undistributed weight going on here, I have more weight down here than this end. That causes this end to move with a lot more force because of the weights on that end. It's not always 128 hertz in this case. It's not always that 128 hertz source that comes here from the individual tines, but the entire weight distribution that happens here. If I have something like this, that is a, um, an attachment, a gem foot attachment, this actually starts to uh, even out the weight distribution between here. Now I just added a weight on the end of this. Now 
this end is not going to move as much as it did before without the attachment. The weight here and the weight here are a little more closer to each other. So you can see with a flexing between each one like a teeter-totter, it wouldn't happen as much down on this end. Then, so this is a 15 millimeter clear quartz crystal. Um, most people will try to use this first. You may you may want to use something like this and, and uh, try to anticipate having something that's a little less painful than an unweighted, or excuse me, um, a barefoot. We call this a barefoot fork with nothing on the end of this. The sensitivity and the things that could happen with a tuning fork without an extension or or an attachment would be this little hole. In some manufacturers, they'll keep the hole down on this end that they use to put it on the lathe during the manufacturing process. So that hole or that little divot is still here. Pressing against something as sensitive as your tooth, when you're pressing down on it like this, that little hole, sometimes, especially if it's at an angle, um, you want to keep this straight so that that little hole is not scraping against your skin because that can add to the pain and that's not very comfortable even. So I would recommend keeping a barefoot fork on this one because if you try to go for something like this, then you have a 15 millimeter or a 25 millimeter with a much larger area. These things, you can see that the weight, you're adding a lot more weight with this 25 millimeter. And then there's other attachments you can have here that are only metal. Again, more and more weight. The more weight you add on this end, the less difference between the two ends are weight-wise, and you start to dampen out the movement down on this end. So I would recommend, in this case, not using this. You have such a small area anyways that you're working on that just putting that tuning fork on, and it may take more than just two or three times. We're not worrying about nitric oxide puffing cycles here. We're doing a physical response to this. Um, what happens when you stretch the skin by pressing and compressing against it with pressure on the tuning fork and the vibration itself takes that fluid for within that confined space and can allow the fluid to diffuse through whatever membrane is holding it in. And it ends up being our fascial layers uh, in the gums and on our outer part of the skin. That's like why we press down, we can feel a bump. Inside the, that bump is fascia that has quarantined that fluid. It may not quarantine it on purpose. It may be that the fluid is coming out enough and then can't get further out of whatever confines it's in. We're releasing it from those confined areas. We may, may not be resolving the issue that caused this, the toothache or gum pain, but we're getting the fluid away to resolve the pain. That's the first A part. You can't have pain necessarily without pressing against the nerve endings. So we're relieving that part with this. Um, if it's an infection that's causing it, the, the infectious material can now separate from that and go into our lymphatic system and be able to be cleaned in that way. If that stuff cannot get out of its confines, then it's stuck there and it's kept to longer periods of time and possibly could that area could expand out more and more and more and that's where your infection stays in place <laughs> the infection shelters in its own place and we don't want that in this case your lymphatic system can't get to it if it's confined in that space plus the lymphatic system running through that space is now compressed so much that the little intake valves to allow the fluid and the infection to move into it to be cleaned it can't because all the little holes are now compressed closed so if we get that material out of that space and the pressure away, then your lymphatic system, the holes in the lymphatic vessels, the intake vessels will be able to open. You'll be able to get all that, that uh, stuff, that material in the lymphatic system to be taken care of. Um, so that was uh, any toothache, any gum pain, um, anything like that. And we don't need to move the fluid away from that space. All we need to do is just um, use the tuning fork itself, press right against that area and just hold it um, probably two or three times, um, three or four at the most should be enough to be able to relieve it. And you'll be able to feel that bump go away completely wherever um, and hopefully the pain gets relieved right then as well. So who are we? We are NHC Academy. Uh, we 
teach tuning fork methods and we have two main methods that we use. One is more physical in nature. It's vibrational fascia release technique, VFRT. And that would be using primarily the 128 hertz weighted tuning fork. And we have much greater methods that we use throughout the entire body in different protocols. We teach uh, and certify practitioners and vibrational therapists and those are, um, we have several of them throughout the world that we've certified, and we have trainers as well. We have in-person classes throughout the world, and those are three-day intensives over the weekend, and, and uh, we also have online training as well for VFRT. And on the right-hand side, you see the logo for a vibrational chronotherapy VCT. Now, the difference between the two is VFRT is all about on the body, we teach uh, methods of palpation. We teach uh, where to put the tuning forks in all kinds of different physical ailments throughout the body. It's pain relief, rapid pain relief, and um, working with restrictions to mobility. And once those things are taken care of with VFRT, we also have VCT, which is primarily unweighted tuning forks and sets of unweighted tuning forks, where we don't put um, any tuning fork on the body itself. It's just above um, the surface of the body. There's timing things that happen with our body and our brain where we time, um, our brain needs to be able to map things out, needs to be able to predict certain events from happening and many conditions that even after you remove the physical barriers to it, you still have a timing issue where your brain needs to remap, retime, resynchronize, recalibrate. This would be the tuning aspect. We focus on the way that the nervous system works within our body for um, muscle movements, motor control, gait, speech therapy. Uh, it can be used with those, but it could also be cognitive as well. Anxiety, emotional uh, reaction, PTSD, um, um, Asperger's, or, or different, um, um, different things like that where you're along a, an, an autism spectrum or um, it may just be emotional related, it may be mental um, storing and retrieving of information within our brain is all time coded. If our timing is thrown off throughout our entire body, then we have problems there and behavioral as well. That um, Those have all been tied to our prediction coding system and it's been tied to our timing system. We use the weighted, unweighted, excuse me, the unweighted tuning forks to recalibrate our body in that method. That training, the VCT training, is free for certification as well. It's available on our website. You can go to nehcacademy.com and uh, check out more information there. And we also have our NEHC Academy Facebook group. So if you go on Facebook and search for us, you'll be able to find our group and join. And we have a YouTube channel where you can see more videos like this um, and join us in one of those locations.